All right, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I will talk about valuations today. So before I explain what uh, this means, uh, let me just say that this is a classical part of convex geometry. So valuations have been studied a lot throughout 20th century and uh, by many people. And uh, I will explain today like sort of like a modern approach to them, modern point of view that originated mainly from uh, war, work of uh, Semyon Alesker, who is at the Tel Aviv University uh, uh, from around uh, 2000. And uh, as I said, it's like more algebraic point of view. And uh, like the, the central fact of this theory is that there is like some natural algebra uh, natural algebra structure in the space of valuations that has some 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 very non-trivial properties, and in particular, some of them resemble kind of like structure some of you or most of you are probably familiar with uh, from Keller geometry or from from other parts of geometry. In particular, there are some 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 theorems that are kind of like uh, informal analogy with Harlov Shad's theorems from Keller geometry and other theories. However, there are two main differences from Keller geometry and from other theories. So first of all, uh, the algebra we are dealing with uh, is infinite dimensional, which uh, which brings like um, lots of kind of abstractions. And second, there are like two different, they are dual to each other, but still different uh, multiplicative structure for, and we have kind of uh, uh, this hard left just like structure for both of them. So this is also uh, probably different from from color geometry. So let me start with valuations. Uh, so uh, so we will consider the so-called valuations and convex bodies. So let me just fix some notation. I will denote by this calligraphy K the set of all convex bodies. So we will just work in a Euclidean space. And a convex body in Euclidean space is just compact convex subset of Rn. So, so you can you can imagine a lot of examples like a cube or ball, right? Unit ball, or all kinds of polytopes like convex hulls of finitely many points and so on. A point, a single point is also a convex body. So this is the set of convex bodies in Rn. And then uh, what valuations means? Well, then the function on this space of convex bodies, let's say C-valued convex, uh, C-valued function is called evaluation. Is evaluation if it is additive, if it is, a, let's say, finitely additive measure on this, on this, say, on this space. So if it satisfies that phi, on the union of two convex sets, whenever the union is again convex, is phi of k plus phi of l minus phi on the intersection. So this is the definition of evaluation. I'll just give you uh, a couple of examples in a second. Uh, let me only uh, complete this uh, accomplishment of notation. So I will denote by val <clears throat> the space of all evaluations on convex bodies that are translation invariant. It's clear what it means, right? If I translate my convex body, the valuation doesn't change. And that are continuous. So there is some natural topology in this space that's induced by metric, the so-called Hausdorff metric. And uh, uh, it's easy to define, but let me skip it. Uh, and the valuations continuous with respect. I will consider valuations continuous with respect to this metric. So I will consider only continuous, continuous translation invariant valuations. Okay, and we will sort of like during the talks study structures on this space. So let me give uh, several actual examples of valuations. Well, I can do the following. So I will take a convex body. Uh, I will denote the valuation mu k, small k, k. And I, I will do the following. So I take my convex body and then I take a hyperplane, uh, it doesn't have to be hyperplane, let's say k-plane, k-plane Rn, and I take the projection to this k-plane. And so this is k-plane, so I will measure I will measure k volume, k-dimensional volume of this projection. So this already is evaluation. 
And but what you can also do, and uh, in this, and this will require, require acquire like more nice properties. You can then average over all k planes. So there is some, uh, there is a unique probability harm invariant harm measure on this on this on the Grossmannian space of k planes, and I measure with respect to this uh, average with respect to this measure. So this is an example of such valuation. It can be shown in its evaluation because volume is uh, its translation invariant again because volume is and it's continuous. And those valuations are called intrinsic volumes. They are very important in convex geometry. So uh, just one a uh, couple of words. Well, what is mu zero, right? Mu zero is just so Grassmann zero planes is just the just the origin, right? So there is nothing, it's just one zero plane. And uh, so this valuation is just a constant. So and well, I'm I will be forgetting about constants like everywhere. Maybe there are like some normalizing constants here, but it can be normalized such that, or the measure can be normalized such that the mu zero is just constant one. Well, of course, constant valuation is a translation where and continuous valuation. Uh, if I take the okay, I, and I do this for all k planes, so for all k between zero and n. So what is the last intrinsic volume? Well, again, I just have one n plane, right? So it's just, uh, there is nothing to average and I will just get the, the volume. So the intrinsic volumes kind of like interpolate between between like the constant and, and the volume. You can also call them like lower dimensional volumes because if you take what, if you take a look what mu one is, well, I'm taking like all, uh, all uh, lines through the origin, taking the projection and measure how long is the projection, right? So this is like sort of like a mean mean width of the body. I can call it mean width. Yeah, it's clear, right? I think. Okay, and uh, if I take the penultimate one, mu n minus one, this can be seen that this is is proportional to surface area. Surface area of a convex body, right? You can take, for instance, uh, polytops, yeah. and uh, then this measure like the the area of the n n minus first uh, n minus one dimensional uh, facets. Okay, <clears throat> so these are like very basic examples of valuations, and. Call it a remark. And they are very important because, because uh, uh, they actually satisfy more properties than just being valuations, translation invariant, invariant options, uh, and continuous. They are also rotation invariant, right? So if because volume is such, because this measure is, is rotational invariant, then all these guys are translate are also rotation invariant. So And in fact, uh, it was shown by Hardwiger in uh, in uh, 1955, I guess, already, that 57, that uh, the intrinsic volumes are essentially the only SON invariant valuation. So I will denote this SON invariants like this. And then this space is just a span. This is a subspace of SON invariant elements in this space. So this is obviously a vector space. And this is just a span of the intrinsic volumes. Okay. So it's an N plus one dimensional subspace, finite dimensional subspace. And all these guys are also linearly independent because, okay, uh, I will put it here, remark. It can be also easily seen that mu k is k homogeneous. Right? If I scale my body, if I scale my convex body by some lambda positive constant, then of course k dimensional volume is k homogeneous. So, so those guys are k homogeneous. So they are all linearly independent. <laughs> 
So uh, using this construction, I'm just getting like different uh, uh, valuations that they are kind of like special. Uh, but they are all homogeneous of integer degree of homogeneity, right? And this holds in general, and this is like very important underlying result for this all algebraic theory. It was proven by Peter McMullen uh, somewhat later in 77, that actually all such valuations have to have modulo addition or taking linear combinations only integer degrees of homogeneity and namely the degrees bounded by zero and n, the dimension of the space like here. So you have this grading. So this vector space is graded as follows. So this space is graded by the degree of homogeneity from zero to n and is the dimension of the Euclidean space, underlying Euclidean space. And, and by subscript k, I will denote you know, the subspace of k homogeneous valuations. So we have a graded vector space. Sure. Well, I, I'm not sure about probability, but it's, uh, I mean, of course, every measure is evaluation, right? It's, it, yeah. it's not, it's not trans, it doesn't have to be translation invariant or continuous, but it's evaluation, of course, every Borel measure right. Right. is evaluation. But in order, right, so because here we consider kind of like much more than measures, then we have to restrict ourselves somehow in order to still get something reasonable, yeah. Uh, I mean, there have been also other other types of valuations that were studied, like uh, some kind of like, for, for instance, not continuous, but kind of like discrete version of these valuations on polytops, then, then they don't have to be necessarily discrete. Uh, they can be discrete, not necessarily continuous and so on. Okay. Yeah. You were saying that in each homogeneous subspace, mm -hmm. one is one. Exactly. Exactly one modulo. modulo. But, but it's okay. It's infinite. This is infinite dimensional space. I will just get to it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So just about say, saying this. So remark here. Well, exactly. So if I consider a zero homogeneous valuations, then it's not difficult to show. Well, this is one example. Uh, and actually, it's not difficult to see that any zero homogeneous such valuation must be constant. So zero homogeneous, zero subspace here are just constants. And then similarly, the top degree subspace is also one dimensional. And it's spanned by the volume. But this is a this is a deep theorem due to Hardwiger again. So this is actually how Hardwiger showed this theorem. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I will get to it. Yeah. Yeah. And everything what is in between. Everything what is in between. Is infinite dimension. Right, so I claim this, it's not obvious at all, but I'll give you now a lot more examples so that you can believe me that uh, I'm actually getting something infinite dimensional here. Namely, what I can do here, I can generalize this construction and I can just weight my measure by any continuous function. So I can just multiply the volume by any continuous function on the Grassmann end and I'll still be getting a translation in very continuous valuation. And now, of course, there is a, this map has a kernel. I don't, I, I'm not saying how large and so on, but now you can believe me that, you know, like every sort of like for every function, I will get like, like different valuations, like very, very roughly speaking. So, so this map actually, so if I send my convex body to, to uh, such number, So this is evaluation. This is a k-homogeneous translation and variant valuation for any for any 
continuous functions on the Grassmannian. All right, so with this construction, I'm getting like much more examples than before. Okay, uh, let me only point out here that, uh, so that all these valuations are even. What does it mean? Well, if I reflect my convex body in the origin, right? Uh, I can also write it like minus K, right? Which is just the, just this set. Well, then, then the project, the volume of the projection doesn't change, of course. So also the, the value of the valuation doesn't change. So such valuations are called even. I just like uh, any function can be decomposed into its even and part, then trivially any valuation can be decomposed into its even and odd, odd part. So there is the composition here, like there's a refinement of this grading. There are even valuations and there are odd valuations. And in this way, I'm actually getting all even valuations. I will get to this also later, but for uh, introducing odd valuations, I have to introduce different construction. But in this way, I'm already getting something infinite I mentioned. So this, this gives me actually a map, right? So it's called Crofton map, it's denoted CR sometimes. This gives me a map from continuous functions on Grassmannian to K homogeneous valuations. Right, so th this is the valuation itself. Uh, this, is, this, is not, this is not this map, right? So, yeah. But in this way, I'm getting this map. Okay, I'll also get to this later. And uh, let me just mention important corollary of this grading, uh, McMullen's grading. And namely, this can be used uh, uh, to show that this space is actually Banach space. So, uh, it's a complete space with respect to the norm defined in an easy way. So norm of evaluation is defined as a supremum, uh, I'm sorry, supremum over all by k in absolute value, where k is contained in, let's say, Euclidean ball, but you can also, you can also take different um, symmetric convex body here. So this is a way how to define norm. And it's a consequence of this important theorem the, that our space is Banach space. So to summarize, this part, we have a infinite dimensional graded Banach space, right? Okay, so this is the structure we have so far. Sure. Well, the convexity is coming in, in in these two in this theorem, for instance. So this is this is shown. So the way McMullen showed this is that uh, you can actually approximate any convex body, convex polytop, and then it's kind of like combinatorial study. The polytops. Yeah, Just exactly. Them. It makes, but this doesn't hold in general. Yeah, thanks. Oh. Uh, what do you mean? It's just the norm. Uh, okay, there is, but uh, there is, but it. I'm not actually sure it's not related to this norm. Yeah, it doesn't come from, from inner product. All right. Uh, so let me now show you how the product so how the product on this space is defined. So part two product of relations. And this is now the modern part, the ELS curse contribution. So before I can define a product. Uh, let me give you even more examples of valuations. So I can consider the following functional. So I will send K to volume of K plus A, where A is some fixed convex body. And this K plus A means just a vector sum, right? This is just all sums K plus A, where K is in K and A is in A. It's called also Minkowski sum. And again, it's it's like very classical and actually easy to show that this guy is again continuous translation invariant valuation for any fixed convex body A. So I fix my convex body A and then I will act on convex bodies like this. I'll just add the convex body to my convex body A 
and take the volume. This will give me a number. OK. I agree it's not obvious from the definition, but you can believe me, it's easy exercise classical. That those are examples of valuations. And now I'll, what Alaskar showed, and this was really the start of the story. In 2001, that those valuations span a dense subset in here, in our space. So, um, so span, span of this set, of these valuations, where A is any convex body. Right? These are all valuations. I'm taking all linear combinations of them. Still getting valuations, so I'm getting something here. And Alaskar showed that this space is is dense. Subspace is dense. And this may not seem like very spectacular, but let me say, let me just say, it was conjectured by McMullen for like twenty more years, so it was like open conjecture. So he settled this conjecture conformative. Affirmative. And the even more important is, is the way he did it. Namely, he showed much stronger statement. Uh, okay, let me, let, let me not write it, but let me just say uh, what Alice Carr actually showed is that those subspaces and this in this grading are actually GLN, uh, irreducible GLN modules. So there is natural action, there is a natural GLN action on valuations. Well, you just Precompose the valuation with the with the action of GLN because the you know linearity preserves convexity, and so in this way, this this becomes uh, all these guys in the decomposition they become uh, Banach space representations, and what Alaskar showed is that they are irreducible. They don't contain any den any dense uh, invariant subspaces. Non trivial. Yes. I'm sorry, uh, linear combinations of those. So these are valuations. They are functions on the set of convex bodies. I, I'm sorry, this n, like n dimensional volume. This is just volume. This is just the Lebesgue measure. Oh, no, I mean, it acts, this, this guy acts on all convex bodies. This is a. Uh, I mean, if if this is a point, for instance, if this is the origin, then you you get you just get the, the volume, the origin volume. No, this is and 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 it's fixed and it's fixed all the time and it's the dimension of the Euclidean space of Rn, and it's fixed all the time. I'm I'm living all the time. I'm living in an n-dimensional Euclidean space. Am I thinking n-dimensional volume there? Okay. Yes, I mean, if I evaluated, if A is a point and if K is also a point, I evaluated this valuation is evaluated to zero on on this on this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Good. Hmm. So yeah, this is the irreducibility theorem, and one consequence is one consequence is is uh, is uh, this McMullen's conjecture, which allows uh, or allowed him to define a product. Another consequence is that this map is actually onto, because if you take a span of of the valuations you constructed like this, it's not difficult to show that it's GLN invariant it's subspace, so it has to be dense. And if you show it's closed, then you are getting everything. Okay, so this is how this this is how this this theorem in in background of this is so, is so important, and we will see another application. So, all right. So now we we know that I can approximate an evaluation, uh, sort of like any continuous valuations by some of valuations of this type. And in order to define a product, uh, in order to define a product of valuations. Uh, uh, one uses this construction, but one needs to restrict it ourselves. Yeah, maybe one, no. Okay, let me give you a definition. Uh, 
which is due to Alaskar, but also due to Jonas Kner and uh, independently by Van Handel. And this will be really a central definition. This will be really algebra. So uh, valuation is, so we define a subspace of smooth valuations to be like a span of those valuations of this type. But here I'm taking only very special convex bodies, namely those that are smooth in the following sense. Their boundary is a smooth submanifold. It's smooth and it has positive curvature. So for instance, a, a ball, a ball is this or some ellipsoid, right? Okay, so I'm thinking like some special valuations of this type. And this actually, Alaskar's original definition was different, but uh, recently Knorr and independently von Handel observed that, that the smooth valuations uh, can be equivalently defined in this way. And what was the original definition? Well, I was talking about this GLN action, that this is a GLN representation. Well, the, the smooth valuations are just GLN smooth vectors in this Banach space representation. So therefore, this space is actually dense in the space of all, all valuations, right? Wait, uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Why is this irreducible? Uh, it's very deep and complicated theorem. It's yeah. So there's this question that the Yes, I'm just taking special valuations. They are kind of like smooth. So uh, the smoothness of these of the valuations is inherited from from the smoothness of this body I'm fixing here. So the, the boundary is a smooth submanifold in Rn, and it has positive curvature, Gaussian Gaussian curvature, like everywhere positive, strictly positive. Okay, positively curved. Why 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 is this positive curvature coming? Well. Basically, because uh, well, you need to consider some some Hessian Hessian of the well. Uh, uh, let's see. So so each convex body is is described by its so called support function. And then in the, well, I mean, it's, we need it in order that, that those guys are, are GLN smooth vectors. Okay, so we need smoothness here. And we need GLN smooth vectors for the definition of product that will follow uh, because, uh, because like very roughly speaking, we need to consider some like uh, some Hessians that need to be like Hessians of the of the support fun of the, some function associated to the convex body, and if if the if the if the body is uh, positively curved, then the Hessian, then the Hessian of this function is is positive definite. This is sort of like this background. Okay, but uh, so here is the reason why we need like smooth valuations. Well, if you consider this like if you define this in this representation theoretical way that are GLN invariant vectors. Then this comes with a like natural Fréchet space topology, right? So I'm just just like smooth functions, right? So I'm just measuring, uh, I'm just taking seminars like measuring all the all derivatives. So this has a Fréchet space topology, and this topology is stronger than the Banach space topology from here. And in order in only to define continuous product, you really need to consider this space with the stronger topology. So this topology is stronger than, than the one in this of the norm. Okay, so this is like, the, let's say, it's just a technical detail. I mean, it's just some dense subspace in, in this, this space of valuation. So let me now say how the product is defined. So, uh, 
Well, you can now believe me, or I mean, with this definition, it's, it's clear that it's just enough to define the product of, if you want to define product of valuations, then it's defined smooth valuations, then it's just enough to define product of valuations of this type, and then you just extend it to lin by linearity. You have to show it's well-defined, right? Because I have more, I certainly have more ways to represent the valuation by sums of those guys, but uh, you have to show something. And the way Oscar did it is the following. So you define the product to be, uh, what you do, you take the Cartesian product of A and B, those fixed bodies, and then, let me put it here so I have more. A Cartesian product of N B, and then you send your convex body uh, to you embed it diagonally to to R N times R N, right? So diagonal embedding is just it's just this a map from R N to R N times R N, and now you have something two n dimensional, and you just take two n dimensional volume. So this is the definition of product. Okay, so probably very intuitive, but uh, Oscar showed that that this defines uh, a continuous, first of all, continuous product, uh, which is commutative, obviously. Commutative. It's also associative. And it respects the grading. Graded, so it's a graded product. Uh, well, infinity times well, infinity to well, infinity. Okay, so we have uh, such algebra. <laughs> Okay, so this is the geometric definition of a product. Uh, let me just say that there is another, as I mentioned in the introduction, there is another version of the product, so some precise sense dual, uh, was found by Berning and Fu in 2006. And another thing, what you can do, it's even it has even simpler geometric meaning. Again, product of those valuations is now uh, called convolution, it's defined by a star. It's just the volume, and now the fixed body is just the sum, the Minkowski, the vector sum of the two convex bodies. And this again defines a, so defines product with, similar, with the same properties, except that it's graded in the other direction, right? So graded here means that if you, if you if you multiply k homogeneous with l homogeneous valuation, you will get k plus l homogeneous valuation. I'm just defining like uh, n plus one homogeneous valuation to be zero and so on. And here, this means that if I multiply n minus k convoluted with, with uh, n minus l homogeneous valuation, I'm just getting n minus k minus l homogeneous valuation. So it goes like in the other direction. And there is, and there is, uh, let me just say that there is some, some natural duality between the two, two products. So there is some isomorphism, some kind of like version of Fourier transform that intertwines these two product structures. Isomorphism on the space of smooth valuations that, that's isomorphism of these two, of these two algebras. No, there is. Uh, uh, I'll see. Uh, no, this is just even and odd, and it's also graded with respect to to the to the parity. Yes. What do you mean? No, commutative just means. No. Yes, without the sign, just commutative. Yeah, exactly. Commutative is associated. Mm -hmm. With the product. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, so it's not a homomorphism, I guess, is it? Uh, but what structure do you consider on 
that okay maybe let's say uh, not infinite functions but smooth functions and then you have like convolution you say ah. okay i'm not sure no i'm not sure The, the convolution of evaluations is related to convolutions of functions, but uh, I'm not probably not in this direct sense. It's sort of like extended, but okay. Let me just uh, give you an example. Let me just give you an example. Uh, again, it's not obvious from the definition, but it can be seen rather easily uh, from the definition of those intrinsic volumes. Well, that actually, if you, uh, if you, take mu one and take case product of it, then modulo may be some multiplicative constant. This is just the case, case uh, uh, intrinsic volume. And similarly, if I take n minus first uh, intrinsic volume and take the case convolution product of it, then I'm, I'm just getting something n minus k homogeneous, well, and I'm getting again n minus k intrinsic volume. So in this sense, you can this is like the very first very first instance of a hard left shift theorem on this little funny algebra. This is a subalgebra and everything is the everything is generated by mu1, right? So this is just truncated polynomial algebra by n plus one power. That obviously satisfies uh hard left shift theorem. And moreover, I didn't mention this. I will write it here. All these, all these, both these structures, they satisfy Poincaré, Poincaré duality. The 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 pairing, the product pairing is is non-degenerate, right? So if I if I if I multiply with the valuation, I'm getting zero all the time. Then then uh, the valuation itself has to be zero. Okay, so we have we have. Uh, graded algebra with Poincaré duality. And this little observation here suggests that uh, there must there might be some some like more general Harlefsch's like structure on the whole algebra of uh, smooth valuations, and this is indeed the case. Oh. Harlefsch's. Uh, Theorem or theorems or evaluations. So let me now describe this structure that resembles uh, some statements from Carroll geometry. So again, it was uh, thrown by first by Lesker in two papers in 2003 and four. That, uh, well, if I if I just take k between zero and, so it's a integer between zero and dimension, a half of dimension of the space, then one has the following isomorphisms. Uh, okay, I will denote the first one by L, uh, L to the power n minus two k. And it's a map from, from uh, k homogeneous smooth valuations to the complementary degree the complementary degree and it's given uh it's just given by multiplication uh of by suitable power of of mu1 so phi is mapped to phi times mu1 to to n minus 2k which is just n minus n mu n minus 2k right so and the the, the claim is so I'm, I'm just denoting the multiplication by single power of mu1 by l and the claim is that this is isomorphism. Okay, but this is the hope, but what Alasker only was able to show that this only holds for the, for the even part, right? So the even valuations, as I told you, are sort of like uh, easier to handle, namely they are, or were sort of easier to handle at the time uh, because all of them can be represented in this way. Let me point out that if I take, and only there, only then if I take uh, smooth function here, then I'm getting uh, smooth uh, valuation, right? So the Crofton map, uh, and because the 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 map is uh, onto, uh, I can represent any 
a smooth evaluation by a smooth function in this way. And you have also dual version for this, uh, which goes in the other way for the convolution with uh, with the with the other intrinsic volume. Mu n minus one to n minus two k. Okay, so this was like the very first. Uh, this was the first uh, discovery of the Harlow-Schultz theorem. Yes, sure, you do, you do, you. you do. Okay. Uh, let me let me skip the and uh, let me postpone it. Right. Okay. Okay. So for those who know. For those who know, uh, this is uh, they, those those uh, can certainly see that this is uh, like this resembles uh, the hard left shift structure. And for those not uh, that uh, do not know, uh, I will get to this when I will be uh, talking about some like more general version of this. Pardon? Yes. So no. Yeah, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. So. Yeah, so these these guys are like dual each other, but this is not the dual left shed operator. So, so yeah, interestingly, uh, the commutator of L and and uh, and lambda is not constant. So it, it doesn't give you it doesn't give you the SO SO two representation. Uh, it's it's not even degree. It's not even constant on val k. Yeah, the val k decomposes into different S O N representation. It's of course constant on each S O N representations because those guys everything commutes with the group of S O N. But uh, since the, the decomposition into S O N modules, like more, it's like complicated here. Yes. Sure. I mean, if you take uh, dual of this, I mean, you can define you can basically define like Hodge star, right? Using the, this magic formula and so on, and you can take dual with respect to this, and then you will get like a SO two representation. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There, there is like no comp there is like no complex structure here, right? Because this is like this this is like the this is just uh, uh, in resemblance to this sub subspace of homology, right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So this is a very good point. I wanted to mention this. So they are not dual to each other in this in this sense. And uh, okay, let me just say a few words about the proof of this. So first of all, uh, Alaskar in another paper with uh, Joseph Bernstein, they they uh, showed. Uh, or they found the decomposition of this space into SON irreducible modules. And then this decomposition is multiplicity free. It's just because, you know, because you have some functions on Grassmann and it's a homogeneous space, so it's a multiplicity free decomposition. And uh, then uh, using some representation theory, theorem of Kasselman and Wallach, you can then show that if you restrict this, this map to this, uh, to the to the sum or to the closure of the representation that appear here, then you will get isomorphism here. So you can uniquely represent an evaluation by a smooth function like this. Well, and then on then the question is what is the what is this left shed's map on this level in the language of smooth functions? And it's okay, I will write it as a proof, but there's a lot more besides what I already mentioned. But in this level of functions, L corresponds to like very simple and known uh, integral operator, namely in this language, namely to the so-called Radon transform, which is defined. So Radon transform. So R is just defined. It's a map from functions on. Uh, I'm mapping K Grassmannian. Uh, sorry, 
continuous functions to k gross manian to continuous functions on n minus k gross manian and is defined just uh, just averaging the function over all fun over all uh, f planes that are contained where k is then smaller than n minus k they are contained in e so this is the so-called radon transform uh, right so it's a function uh, it's a it's a integral operator from functions on k gross minus to functions on gross minus of complementary degree it's defined like this and it turns out that that in this picture if i represent valuation by smooth or continuous functions then this operator is just precisely this random transform on this level and it's well known to be in check it's well known to be bijective but there is a lot more work around as i mentioned before Okay, so this is the idea of the proof, or this is what's behind these isomorphisms. Okay, how much time do I have? Uh, 15 minutes? So let me say that in order to extend this in order to extend this uh, theorem to to odd valuations, we need to work. So we need to introduce like different construction because the actually the construction that I use to define a, a product of valuations is not very suitable for work for like describing these algebraic structures, right? So I mean, this solutions of this type. And instead, let's see one more important construction of evaluations. Namely, via differential forms. So what you can do is that, well, let me just take this example. So I can take a smooth differential form, n minus one differential form on, uh, on just this product space, Rn times this field. And I integrate this form over the so-called normal cycle of a convex body. And the normal cycle is just, is just the union of all unit outward normals of the body and you can say this is you can you can show this is a n minus one uh dimensional lipschitz only lipschitz sub manifold of this of this smooth manifold and it's naturally oriented also so you can integrate differential forms around it and because the normal cycle has the evaluation property right you can imagine so right that uh, is the valuation property, then this gives me evaluation. And it's uh, uh, if the differential form is smooth, then this valuation is smooth. And it's another consequence of the irreducibility theorem that all, basically all smooth valuations are represented in this way. However, there is a kernel here, which is, uh, which is however, uh, known, explicit, known explicitly Uh, okay, it's known explicitly, and it's just in terms of some some second order differential operator uh, on those forms, so called Riemann differential. Okay, I will not go into detail here. But using this using this uh, construction and using this so called kernel theorem description of the kernel of this map, uh, uh, Bernick and Pekka. were able to remove the evenness assumption from the from this theorem in 2008. Okay. In this language of, of differential forms, there is also a formula for the product, but it's rather complicated. It involves some, some fiber integration and so on, but there is very simple formula for, for the convolution product. And it involves only this, this Riemann 
operator I was talking about and the wedge product. It basically modulo some like cohomology, remind cohomology. The convolution in this language comes from the wedge product of forms. And using this, uh, Bernie Gebrecht were able to show that this convolution hard left sheds is an isomorphism, is an isomorphism between all valuations. without the evenness assumption. And interestingly, this proof also uses like some color identities from color geometry, uh, namely on the non-compact color manifold, basically Rn times Rn without zero, it's naturally compact color manifold and using color identities, they were able to assume some, uh, well, in order to show this, because you have non, because you have uh, infinite dimensional space, we need to show first injectivity and then also surjectivity. It's not equivalent. This is what is different here, and and uh, for surjectivity, they also use some like bi bijection of Laplacian on differential forms and so on, uh, but also crushed up the, the color identity in this space. It's just the same operator, exactly. It's the same operator, and let me also show. Let me also say that uh, on the level of differential forms, it just corresponds to Lie derivative with respect to some the so-called red vector field, which is like, which is the dual vector field to the natural contact structure on this uh, on this sphere bond. Okay, so it's rather like sim simple, simple meaning of the of the operator again. Okay, so and like recently, uh, let me only say briefly that recently uh, we gave an alternative proof together with Banner of this statement by using the decomposition. So Alasker, Alasker used there the decomposition of even of even valuations into irreducible subspace, so and irreducible modules, but the decomposition of, of uh, this space is known to uh, is known due to Alasker, Bernick, and Schuster. And what we did, we just construct. It's also multiplicity free, also for odd valuations, although, although it's not obvious because this only holds for even valuations. But it's also multiplicity free for even valuations, and we constructed the highest weight vector in each representation that occurred. And since since this is like, again, as when it over map, then it maps highest weight vectors to highest weight vectors. And we like evaluated explicitly. And then using using these explicit computations, we were able to verify that it's it's indeed isomorphism. S-O-N, S-O-N. G-L, yeah. It's even irreducible for exactly for GLN and for SON it's multiplicity free. All right. Uh, so in the last very last part, let me now mention the following generalization of all this. And with this, I will recall what I mean by hard left sheds in Keller geometry. So part four, I guess. So there is the so-called mixed hard left sheds. Mixed hard left sheds in Kell geometry and then if you want evaluations also. So what do I mean by this? Okay, let me state a theorem that was proven by Dean and Guyen actually rather recently, 2006. And it says the following. So if I have a compact color manifold, and I take some color forms, some positive one one forms, closed forms, uh, and I will take a bunch of them, n minus two k, and then one more. So these are color forms. One one forms on the on the. Uh, on the on this color manifold, then uh, right. So I can consider the cohomology, the cohomology ring, like the RAM cohomology of of the of the manifold. So Riemann manifold. So, and it turns out if the manifold is color, 
I can uh, I can refine this decomposition, this this cohomology, into the so-called Dolbor Dolbor cohomology, right? And I have this additional grading coming from this from this uh, uh, complex structure. And this ring has the following structure, namely, the multiplication by the color forms uh, induces the following isomorphisms, and this is what's called isomorphism of uh, the hard left shifts in color geometry. So the space of PQ forms or PQ classes, right? So this, these are, I mean, these are classes. This means uh, closed modulo exact forms with respect to the Dolbo cohomology. So this is isomorphic, isomorphic to the complementary degree n minus P and minus Q. Okay, I'm taking minus uh, n minus p minus q here. And this isomorphism is just given by like this. So I'm just sending, I'm just sending my class from here to the product with those scalar forms. n minus p minus q. This is what's called hard left sheds in color geometry. And the classical hard left sheds is that I'm just taking here a single copy of one color form, of the color form that defines me this color structure. But it doesn't have to be, it turns out it, it doesn't have to be like um, uh, power of one, one color form, but it can be like a uh, mix like this, it can be product of, of, of uh, different one one forms from this color cone. So this is what's called hard left sheds in, in color geometry. And there is also there is also a counterpart to this, namely the so-called Hodge-Riemann relations, and it just tells me, well, I can I can compose this isomorphism with the Poincaré pairing, with the Poincaré pairing, and it just tells me when this, like, it just specifies very precisely when this pairing is uh, positive and when it's negative. It's positive or negative on the so-called primitive subspaces, and it turns out that I can. It follows from this theorem that I can decompose everything into this primitive subspaces, sort of. And all right, so maybe in this connection, let me also point out that also we, we also have a version of Hutchman for evaluations, but I won't talk about this today. So this is the the the, the mixed version of of our left sheds in in uh, in color geometry. So it was shown rather recently, and. Also, let me point out that this actually follows as from a, from a more, much more general result by Catani, which was proven two years later. And Catani actually showed that whenever you have, whenever you have a structure like this that satisfies the non-mixed hard left shells and Hodge-Riemann, then it automatically satisfies this mixed version without any further work. But it doesn't apply to our situation. So now I would like to also, uh, where, is it? where is it? I would like also to, to kind of like, split this power into like different maps. Uh, and indeed, this is what we showed. I will conclude by this, but it doesn't follow automatically like in this in this way because our, our algebra is infinite dimensional. So let me only state this theorem we have. Uh, so what is the, what is the, the mixing here, right? So here, instead of one single color form, I, I consider like different color forms from the color cone. So what, what are, what are like, what is, what is the color cone in our situation? Uh, so just one remark to this. Well, again, different meaning of this, of this operator lambda is the following. So if I act uh, on evaluation by this lambda, I'm getting the evaluation again, and the evaluation is given as follows. So I'm just taking phi k, and I add to this t plus the unit ball here, and I take, I take the derivative in zero. This is again not obvious, but not difficult to show. But this is another meaning of, of, the, of this left shots operator for evaluations. It's derivative operator, actually, derivative with respect to this ball. And now what you can do if you want to generalize this, well, you can define for a different convex body, then the ball here, you can just replace the ball by any other smooth convex body. Uh, 
uh, yes, I mean, for the proof, you really need to consider contact structure with respect to this body. But I mean, still, you can represent you you still represent your differential forms, your evaluations by differential forms on the same on this manifold. It's fine. You can, you can, but what I said before, still, I, I see, sure, yeah, here, if you, yeah, sure, yeah, in here, yes, in here, yes, then, then it's lead derivative, it's also lead derivative with respect to different vector field, yes, exactly, exactly, corresponding to the different context structure, but I'm, I'm still representing my forms, my evaluation via forms on this, on this. okay, so let me conclude by, this is the, these are the, this is our calicone. So this is the operator. And it actually comes from a multiplication by evaluation. There is evaluation. It, uh, it can be written explicitly that does this job for you. That, right? So like this was done by multiplication by the n minus first intrinsic volume. There is also evaluation that multiplication with it gives me this operator. Lambda C. Okay, and then what we show. Is simply. Uh, is the following. Well, we basically have this theorem for those operators. So Lambda, I'm just a name between and then I'm taking convex bodies, C1, C, and minus 2K, smooth convex bodies, smooth with positive curvature. And then this map, so if I take this map uh, from val N minus K, then I'm uh, ending up well, K, okay. and we show that this is an isomorphism. But this is kind of like mixed version that generalize, generalize this, this theorem. This, this theorem of Beringer Brecca is just a special case of it when all those bodies are Euclidean balls. And there is also the Harle, Ho, Ho Schriemann part of it, which is like another, another part of the story, namely in here, like in the finite dimensional situations, I mean, those structures, they don't appear not only in those two contexts, but in many, many other contexts, uh, in particular in combinatorics. And, but everywhere, the, the algebra is finite dimensional. And whenever you want to prove hard left sheds, you usually do it like together, one time together with Hodge Riemann. And very often you do it like some kind of like using some clever com induction. But here in this proof, we really had to show this first alone, like first surjectivity and injectivity separately, and then only we were able to proceed to the treatment uh, because of infinite dimensionality of the algebra. Okay, so let me stop here. Questions, I guess online, no, <laughs> but I'll do it, yeah. Oh. Then you get zero. Yeah, all, all those, all those, all the other subspaces that do not occur in the in the McMullen's decomposition, they they are just zero by definition. Banning full convolution, yes. The degree of homogeneity, yes, but I mean, this happens with this happens with the color forms too, right? So, I mean, the product of of uh, I don't know, like two n two n plus one color forms is zero, right? So, no, I, I, I probably didn't. Yes. Then, then you are defining this solution while the stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not obvious why, like more than n balls, why this should be zero. 
<laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> no, it, it doesn't give you zero, right? Because those guys, they are not of pure degree of homogeneity. They have like all, right? So this this is not of them, right? It's not an homogeneous valuation. It has like, it has, it has uh, uh, components, non-trivial, in general, non-trivial components in each, in each uh, subspace in the grading. I'm not sure what you mean, no. But this is not an homogeneous valuation. I mean, I'm I'm just thinking. I'm just I'm just using. Okay, let me just write volume. No, I, it's just the Lebesgue measure. So this is a this is a way that that gives me how to how to define a smooth valuation. It doesn't have to be homogeneous. No, I'm taking the the same Lebesgue measure all the time. Just n-dimensional Lebesgue measure. But precise what one? I'm not sure what you mean. Okay, well, let's look after it. Um, so I sorry, I just a few questions about the Crofton map. Is is it called? Yes. Yes. So uh, uh -huh. did I get it? Oh, did I get it right that it produces just the even valuations? Yes. And uh, it produces all smooth valuations from smooth functions. Mm -hmm. uh, is it also GL equivariant? Like if I write the Grossmannian as as a homogeneous space for the general linear group, is it? Uh, I yes. I guess I guess you need to. Uh... You need to understand the functions on Grassmanns as a as a sections of some 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 non-trivial bundle of the of the over a Grassmannian, something like you probably have to twist it with some I don't know some densities or something like this. Mm -hmm. Then it it will be GLN equivariant. Everything can be written in GLN equivariant, but this the, the, this is what is used like in in these so, in the proof of these theorems. Right. Uh, so is the the kernel of this uh, map known or, or describable? Or... Yes, because because the image is known, so the image is. Uh, I I mean, can you write down a, a smooth function such that the, the, the it, it's is... yeah, it's known in terms of it's known in terms of uh, in terms of uh, SON representations. And, and that leads me to my next question. Um, these uh, Banach space representations, uh, from representation theoretical point of view, are they um, like described? Do, do you have, for example, the yes, parameter? It, yes. I mean, what Alasker did uh, proving this uh, this irreducible theorem, he computed uh, the characters like explicitly, and they are. I mean, the, for for even valuations, they are like they are like functions on Grassmannians, right? Basically, right. So this is like known what this is. And for even valuations, you actually get something, some like similar construction. You can get similar construction. Namely, instead of Grassmannian, you have to consider some what is called like partial flag manifold. Like you, you consider like like pairs of, of K plane and some subspace of oh, sorry, line of for odd valuations. For odd valuations, yes. And on such manifold, like considering functions on such manifold, you can again construct even valuations. Oh, I'm sorry, odd valuations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this is actually, I mean, for this, yes, because here it's enough just to apply, apply the, 
the what is called Alaskar Fourier transform, like the this isomorphism that intertwines the two structures. Exactly. And let me also say that this for, for even so for odd valuations, this like Alaskar's construction was like very involved and it's not at all intuitive, but for even valuations, this has like very simple meaning in terms of these Crofton functions. It's just the just the orthogonal com just taking the orthogonal complement. So this is the duality. Well, and if if you apply it, then then you get you get uh, this isomorphism, yes. But for this for this uh, where am I? For this mixed version, it's not that clear. I mean, you can also do it, but you will be getting some strange stuff because the Fourier transform of, of real valued even valuations is again real valued, but the Fourier transform of real valued even odd valuations is purely imaginary valued. So then those guys, unlike here and unlike here, the, the images of those guys, because this, I mean, for 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 symmetric bodies here, this is even valuation. This, I mean, the the guy that that does the job here, like the, that, the convolution with it is the is this operator is even valuation. So the the uh, the image of it, the Fourier transform, will be again something like real value. But mm, uh, if this is not symmetric, then this has even an odd part. So I'm getting some something like imaginary valued here, and this is like sort of strange. Although the, the it's it's not so clear what the what the natural cone should be. So this is this is this is open. I would say like the uh, at least I don't understand this like fully. Yeah, I think maybe very many questions. So I was just this whole story and even remind me a bit uh, when you take an uh, when you take a picture manifold with it. Transform and increase them by some line bounds. Mm -hmm. So then you will have similar decomposition, but now you have not so as a representation of SL2, but only P1, P. So you have a, a you have a covariant weird this uh, line bound that it squares to your lambda stuff like that. Is, is there any trait in the picture? You, you can take it as Square root of the Square root of I have never I've never encountered this, okay. first of all. And so you basically like twist this space, you mean? You twist the square root of by So now before you had for contraction with tether form, and that's going down now. No, sorry, before you had multiplication by tether form, now you replace it by taking color and the root with respect to the connection on the line bundle. Mm -hmm. and you can show that it squares to, to uh, multiplication by scalar form, and then you have a bigger space back. So it, mm -hmm. it's a duality now, not between uh, your SP and Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, I cannot really imagine anything like. Okay, I probably don't understand it still well, very good, but I cannot imagine something like squaring like those guys because they are really degree one. So I can't imagine squaring this even by some twist or something. More like a taking square root. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, taking square square root of them, yeah. No, I can't imagine something like this, but maybe, maybe, yeah. I have any, any more naive questions. So, I mean, it, it might be the part that has uh, an out of should, should I be thinking of this space evaluations as some kind of like generalized formality? Or, no, yeah, that's like a very good question, but this is also unclear. So, uh, th there is nothing like this known so far. So, I'm just, I guess, to get more fundamentally, 
once you pass this this bilateral theorem, what what does this tell you about the space evaluation? What does this or the space of the graph manians? What what is the fundamental object of study that you're interested in? What have you learned by this bilateral? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, okay, so. So in general, it just gives you like more structure on this whole space of of all smooth valuations. But in here, there are like interesting uh, finite dimensional subspaces. And I mentioned one of them, the, the Hadwiger's SON invariant valuation. But you can also, but there are like some, there is something in between. And namely, you can, you can consider valuations invariant under some group G, which is like, uh, closed, closed uh, subgroup of this guy, and if this uh, of SON, and if this group is transitive on the unit sphere, just like this one, if this one is still transitive on the unit sphere, it's like big enough to be transitive, then this guy is actually finite dimensional. But it's bigger. If it is, if this is a proper subgroup, then this guy is bigger. For instance, while so if this is uh, or okay, let me just write. U and half, if n is even. You can consider valuations that are unit only unitarily invariant. Okay. And then, because the, the, the products, they obviously commute with the, with the group of, of SON, with the full group of SON. Actually, the product commutes with GLN, and the convolution can be can be rewritten, namely the, the 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 space of valuations can be twisted by some by some one line bundle such that also the convolution commute with GLN. But anyway, if they are written like this, uh, the structures commute with SON. So this means that uh, you also have hard left sheds on this algebra. First of all, it's a subalgebra, and it also has hard left sheds. And this is some finite dimensional subalgebra. So it it really has some some right, some some structure like this, right? So the the Betty numbers are unimodal sequence and so on. And those algebras, and I'm getting to the answer finally, they are interest. Uh, so they are really interesting in uh, in um, what's called integral geometry. Namely, uh, you can consider the following problem: you have two convex bodies, and you move the second one sort of like randomly like by rotations and also by translations and you measure what is the probability that that uh, those two bodies intersect so one way you can do it you can just measure uh, okay let me write chi but chi is like it can be called euler characteristic it's actually the euler characteristic but in a very simple toy model of it it's just one when this is non zero non trivial and if the intersection is trivial in zero. And if you measure over the group of rotations, then the probability can be expressed in the intrinsic volumes of those bodies K and L. Like this, maybe with some constants. So this is like very classical result, the so-called principal kinematic formula. So it was studied already by Poincaré. And, and for, this follows like that, this is the this is the case. It's expressible like this from Hadwiger theorem, because you notice because because this is a this guy on the on the left is valuation continuous translation invariant in both K and L, and now you can do it for any you can replace this group of rotations by any other group. By any other group acting transitively on the unit sphere, for instance, for unitary, the unitary group. And uh, these, these formulas are kind of like of interest in integral geometry. And this is a way how to, how, to, how to get them, how to produce them. Because if you know this space, if you know the basis of this, for instance, well, then you know this, the left-hand side is again expressible in the, in the following sum, where these are like some basis vectors of this space. And moreover, the constants that appear here, uh, so, this defines you kind of like co-algebra. This so you send uh, evaluation here. This one, this can be also replaced. You send it to to product tensor product of two valuations, and this co-algebra is precisely dual to this algebra 
uh, valuations with product. So this, in other words, knowing this algebra here, it, determ uh, it determines the, the precisely the kinematic formulas like uh, in a whole, like uh, all, everything, like everything, even the constants here, not only that it exists. So for instance, there is a, like, a, uh, there is a, a seminal, actually, annals paper, Bernick and Fu from 2011, when they describe, where they describe precisely those algebras, and they used it to, to obtain, like, all, all kinds of those kinematic formulas. So this is really of something that is of interest. Thank you. Yeah. That you have a notion of primitive forms, even though it's not an SL2 representation, you still, the notion of primitive forms is just the kernel mm -hmm. of, of lambda makes sense. Well, I mean, the uh, definition makes sense, but is it useful, I guess? It's, but it's the, yeah, it, it's probably different from, so we, we consider primitive forms, uh, so for us, primitive forms is, is kernel of, of lambda to n minus 2k plus 1. This is primitive forms. Okay. Yeah. And then, so can you produce a left shift decomposition with respect to those? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Th this works just like a. This works just. Yeah, this is just under. And then, so you have an associated Hodge map given by this very formula, the magic formula. What do you mean? There's. So, yeah, you can define then a Hodge map, I guess. You, you can define it, yeah. You is can this thing interesting or. Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know any geometric meaning of it. I can only yeah. define it. I mean, I take each, I reduce each SON mod, each SON type that appears, right, with mm -hmm. multiplicity one, and I can compute what is the constant there, and that's it. Okay. Sort of like. But I don't know any geometric meaning of mm -hmm. it. No. But it's an interesting question. That's a very final question. So, like everything, because there's no differential going on here, there's no cohomology or anything. Um, you're not. You have no notion, no way to say whether the Kähler form is closed or not. So, to some extent, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, yeah, that it's almost symplectic in some sense. Maybe closer to symplectic than it is to Kähler, or is that? But what form? You mean? I mean the the form, the degree I... one form that you're using. Oh, I see. You know, because if it, if it's a Kähler form classically, then it's by definition it's closed because it's symplectic. But um, so I guess what I'm saying maybe it's closer to Hermitian mm. geometry than to Kähler geometry. Or, or is there something Kähler going on here that I'm missing? Probably to symplectic as, as far as I understand better. So I mean, again, if you just if you just work with it, like there are diff there are even different ways how to how to look at this representation by differential forms, and then if you represent this guy, this operator as a multiplication by by differential form, this in some picture is really multiplication by some symplectic one one form. And for this, I mean, actually for injectivity in those statements, symplectic linear algebra is used. I mean, I mean, even even this kernel theorem, this this Riemann operator, it just comes from linear or symplectic algebra. Okay, that's probably uh, where we should stop. So we'll thank the speaker again. Thank you. We have our own Aaron Kettner uh, from INCAS and the Charles University, who will speak about. Kunz-Pimsner algebras of, I can't read that. <laughs> Twisted partial automorphisms. All right, so hopefully we'll see you next week.